Okay, initially said in the Sakai videos that you had to email ICT to ask them to load points. I've been since shown how to do it myself. So you click up here on your Sakai site on sites and you go here to create new site. Okay, so course site is if it's an official course site. Project site we've used for like our research group. So it's not an official course, it's just a project. I honestly, oh, the only difference between them is the permissions. So like for a course, you can have to have different permissions for a lecturer, a tutor, and a student, whereas a project site, there's only two levels of permissions. One is for the person maintaining the site, um, which you could add a whole bunch of lecturers, and the other is for the students. So that's the only difference. So if you had a course, you would click on course site. Then in this drop down menu, there's a whole bunch of options. It doesn't seem to matter which one you choose. So if you choose the wrong one, it doesn't seem to block you. So for example, say here you said you were 2020 block three course, and then by chance your course got moved to a block four. You don't have to come back and edit this. So I'm not 100% sure why we need this. But anyway, the safest is either to just make it a 2020 full year course, or you could do semester one and semester two. So let's say semester two and click continue. Okay, so in the past, so this was the reason why I originally said you had to contact Sakai, because when you come here, there's no way of finding your course. So it turns out you can't use this option here, so you've got to click here and say, still cannot find your course section. And now you can physically type it in. So for example, if it's Geology 1000, A, you can't even add an A, there's a limit of, I think, eight characters. Course, it doesn't matter what you type here. I've learned you can write whatever you want, and the, it just whatever's here lands up coming in the title of your course on the tab in Sakai. So type in your staff number here and click continue. So I suppose I'm actually just going to write a test here so I know that it's not a proper site and I can delete it later. Click continue. And I don't think I've ever selected site language. I think it's automatically in English. It's nice to write a description here. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I'm, uh, let me just show you what I've got on some of the other sites. I've tried to make quite an official first page. Oh, not this one. <laughs> um, let's go over here. Okay, so I've said welcome to whatever the main course. What this course and its code, university, the lecturer's name and email, and I've got a nice picture of geology. You can actually copy these off any site that you might be on a course with me, or you can just literally type in stuff here. Short description, I don't think I've ever typed in here, but I've never typed in this long description, and then here's your name and email. This is just, yeah, it comes up somewhere that students can find, but if you put your email here in this description, it's easier for them to find your contact details. You click continue. This is the important site, so what um, tools do you want? So always come here and click Assignments. Can click Calendar, I don't use it super duper. Um, forums, I used to be a fan of, but they're actually quite a mission. Gradebook is if you do online assessments, it'll automatically load the grades into here. I've never used Classic, I use this one. Lessons is if you want to actually type out the lesson plans. Meetings is if you want to have big blue button meetings. Um, resources is the folder we usually upload everything into, so quite important. And then last one here, tests and quizzes. And then click. You can bring in material from other sites. So maybe if you've got a previous site for this course, you can go yes from the site and choose it here and it'll import all the material across. And so you click OK. And this is just if you want to call your lessons tab something else, but I don't, so I'm just going to click continue. Um, do you want them to publish it or do you want them to leave it as a draft so you still want to edit it before students can see it? If you click publish, students can see it straight away once you've added their um, student numbers. Um, yeah, I leave this as defaults so at limit to official course members. Um, the, so the first one, only the people you add to the course can view it here, anyone at that can view it. So I click on continue. A summary of everything, request site. Uh, seems it, it creates it automatically. You'll see up here it says it's been created. If you click on it, it'll bring you automatically into here. So next step would be to add participants. So you'll go site info, add participants, and you need to paste the student numbers here. And uh, yeah, let me quickly steal the student number. The Ashen will be my test subject. Um, Okay. Oh, why is it not working? There we are. So 
so just the student number um, I think you can have a comma afterwards so like I've had an Excel spreadsheet of student numbers and I've just copied the, all the cells and pasted them here and it worked and I click continue so you assign them to be students and you click continue and then here do you want to send them notification or not about the site so I'm not going to send it to him and then finish you have to click finish here to add them if you don't click finish it won't have added them um, so I click finish and so now when I scroll down here I can see me and uh, Tushin oh did I cho add the wrong one um, are added to this group um, so yeah that's how you set up a site